in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen heavenly father we thank you and we praise you you are the most high god you are the king of kings you are the lord of lords and there is nothing impossible to you thank you for once again bringing us together this morning to listen to your word so that we experience your presence mightily as you prepare o lord that your word will change and transform our life holy spirit my teacher my guide my helper help me to speak your word take control of my whole being my tongue my vocal cords holy spirit i am not speaking it is you who speaks through me your word thank you holy spirit making this teaching easy and understandable in jesus name amen 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 thank you jesus praise to jesus love you jesus hallelujah jesus praise to jesus thank you jesus praise to jesus thank you holy spirit praise the lord good morning brothers and sisters today i am going to share about the <coughs> abide in jesus how how we can abide in jesus praise the lord so let's go to genesis chapter 15 verse 5 the word says then he brought him outside and said look now toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them and he said to him so shall your descendants be praise the lord this is god bringing abraham out he says he brought forth him out yes and he brought him out and said look at stars if you are able to and number them and he said unto him that god is said to abraham so shall be your descendants or your seed be okay now if we see in previous verse verse number 4 what the verse is and behold the word of the lord came unto him and saying this shall not be your hair but he that shall come forth out of your own bowels shall be your hair praise the lord now here god is giving abraham a promise in the fourth verse he gave a promise he gave his word now in the same way in our life has god has also given us a promise yes surely now when god has given us a promise do we ever have trouble believing that word of the word or promise yes many times right when we say i believe the word of god many a times the understanding of believe means i am just agreeing mentally with the word of god the with the word what he says okay that's not the meaning of believing believing means believe means my actions must correspond to the message that i heard okay many times we fall into this deception of the enemy now you look at the word of word when you look at the word and when you are reading the word or when you are studying the word you are believing that promise yes when we say i believe the word of god many times the understanding or believe means i am just mentally agreeing with what the word of god says that's not the meaning of believe believe means my action must correspond to the message that i heard many a times we fall into this deception of the enemy so let's take the example we look at 1 peter 224 now the word of god says by the wounds of jesus we have, we were healed by the wounds of jesus we were healed okay now when you take the word and you see a symptom in your body and there is fear knocking in your mind trying to gain access into your heart when you are encountering that fear when you are encountering that that seed okay now is that fear trying to take grip over you yes now the fear trying to take a grip over us but at the same time we say i believe by the wounds of jesus i am healed correct if i say by the wounds of jesus i am healed but my actions don't correspond to 
what I am saying. Then I am not believe the word of God, but only mentally believe what the word of God says. See, it is very subtle. That's when many a times people get stuck and they wondering why it is not happening. I am believing, I am confessing, but my why not healing takes place? Jesus did not say, you mentally agree and you see the glory. No, no, no. He said, you believe first. When you believe, you will see the glory of God. So believing is much more than mentally agreeing with the scripture. Mentally agreeing with the promise of God. Okay. And God is teaching Abraham how to believe. This is going to be amazing. The Lord is going about to teach us this morning. Now, now, now in fourth verse, he is giving a promise to Abraham. And he says, Abraham, you will have an heir. And this will be your seed. He gave him a promise. Okay. Now in fifth verse, he says, and he brought him forth outdoor. God brought Abraham outside of the tent and said, look now towards heaven. See, God did not stop right there. Okay. After giving him a promise. You know why I am saying this? Because in the beginning, I used to trouble believing the word of God. When I look at myself and I'm saying, I am scanning the scripture. I am saying, I am the body of Christ. Satan has no power over me. But yet I can see myself operating in fear, doubt, worry. I can still see myself being fearful, worrying. I can still see myself symptoms in my life, in my house. Satan is working now much more than before in my marriage, in my children's life. Even though I am confessing concerning fear and worry number of times, I am confessing also, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am set free from all my problems. I am living a life pleasing to the Lord. So what was I am doing at that time? I was mentally agreeing with what the word of God says but not really believing that what his word says will work for me. There are times, there used to be times in the beginning where the promise that God has given to me, I used to literally struggle to believe it. You know why my, you know why my sense knowledge, my sense had such a strong grip over me. For me, it was, it was, Unless I see a physical manifestation, I was having trouble believing it. And there used to be times I used to felt so defeated. I used to say, Lord, why not anything happening in my life? Because the situations, circumstances around me look so bad. It is tough for me to believe. It is difficult for me to believe when the word of God says, you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. And Lord, you are saying, I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Why I am struggling in my marriage, my children's job, in my finances. I am struggling to pay my bills, pay my children's fees. Even though I know it is God's word. So what do you do when your mind is wavering like that? What do you do when your mind is struggling like that? To believe the promise of God. You want to know the answer? The answer is simple. You meditate on that promise. You meditate on that promise. I repeat it once again. You meditate on that promise. If you don't know and if you are struggling to believe the promise of God, you are struggling to literally take the, that word, put it in your heart. You meditate on what that promise. That's it. Now, what is the meaning of meditate? Meditation. God gave Joshua the instructions. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. Do you think about, do we think about our problems, our challenges, about how bad our situation day and night? Yes. 
we have to make any effort to think about it no no we don't have to make any effort it start coming but at the same time the word of god commanding us in his instruction and saying meditate the word and if that word is not coming naturally that means i have to consciously do it i have to consciously consciously to do it over and over again till it become a part of me that starts flowing automatically are you understanding praise the lord thank you jesus so meditating on that word meditating means i ponder on a particular scripture and over and over again the word meditate means to think over to think over and over to roll that matter in your mind to keep thinking on it to keep imagining on it that's called as meditation not as you take one scripture and you sit in a corner and you start meditating no 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 you go about doing your work just as you meditate upon your problem as how you roll on that problem over in your mind just as you keep your focus on things that your natural senses can see in the same way i have to consciously meditate on the promise of god over and over again if your eyes cannot hold that word your mind not able to remember it take that promise of god stick on it where you can see it over and over write it down and keep it before your eyes so that you don't lose sight of it that's how i have to consciously make a practice to meditate upon his word upon his promise and i have to doing it until it permanent okay okay i will give the example so we can understand better for example somebody spills coffee on my shirt by mistake now will my shirt stained yes now i come home and i wash it the stain will not go completely correct it will be there some spots be there and now when i take that shirt and wear it again the stain will remind me the incidents how the coffee fell right now what happened to my mind my mind whenever looks at that stain recalls what had happened why because that incident has become stain in my mind just as the coffee become has stain on my shirt in the same way we must take the scripture meditate on it speak it write it down study it memorize it and keep applying it to your situation over on your own situation to your own circumstances over and over again until that scripture permanently stains your mind until that scripture permanently rooted in your heart that is the kind of meditation god is asking us to do praise the lord hallelujah thank you jesus where his word gets written down in my heart never ever to come out and that kind of meditation of the word will affect your life in my life in a way that nothing else can there are certain stains you know when it comes on your cloth you can't remove it for example when we use raw turmeric we say hindi in hindi kachcha haldi and uh, in malayalam pacha manjal right if that color comes on your dress it is very difficult to remove that stain isn't it it doesn't go in fact when we exposed to water or detergent now it turns red it was yellow in the beginning but now it turns red there are certain stains which don't leave your cloth and and now you discarded it correct that exactly what god wants to teaching us that is the kind of meditation of the word he is asking us to do his word becomes stamped in our heart it becomes stamped in our mind and that is the kind of meditation god was instructions given to joshua and here is doing the same thing with abraham because 
until and unless that word that promise of god marked permanently in your soul in your heart that would not be able to release the effect the power which carries that word has the power to change your thinking that word has the power to change your life that word has the power to change your physical situation that word has the power to bring change in your physical body and that's what happens to abraham let's see when we read that verse let's see against the verse number 4 and behold the word of the lord came to abraham saying this one shall not be your heir but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir and verse number 5 says then he brought him outside and said look now toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them and he said to him so shall your descendants be praise the lord now when god first told abraham that he was going to father of nations abraham was an old man wasn't he yes his wife sarah was also old correct she was not only old but she was barren all her life okay now when god is giving abraham a promise you know he is saying you are father of nation now how can a old aging childless couple have even one child don't you think this thought would occur to abraham definitely he is looking his condition he is already old his wife sarah is old she is barren all her life okay and here is god giving him a promise which seems next to impossible much less a nation coming out now do you see that promise of god which he has given to abraham now was that promise contradicting his mindset surely yes now god knows god knows that what promise he has given to abraham and he understanding the nature of abraham he understanding the human nature see we all have a, had a carnal nature now we no longer have that nature okay but at that point of time abraham was struggling right his sense his senses are so strong right he can see there is nothing you know what god is saying it is next to impossible abraham can understand the struggle that he is going through mentally to believe what god is saying and god knows the mental struggle what that abraham would have to believe that promise that is why god did not leave abraham at that struggle he brought him out of that place he told him look up look now towards heaven so god did not make him just a verbal promise and let him be at that see that's the heart of our god when we when he tells us to do something he will always equip us he will always show us the way how to do it he will not leave you and me to our own struggle so here god is not only making a verbal promise to abraham and leaving it and saying it is now i told you now it is up to you believe how you want to believe but no 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 here god is showing him how he needs to believe he brings him out and he is doing what he is and he is doing what he is giving abraham a picture of that promise to meditate he is giving abraham a picture of that promise to meditate he took him out and said now look at stars count now and if you are able to number them and he said to him so shall be your seed he takes him out and that night he turns his eyes to the sky and says you look at those stars so shall be your seed so shall be your seed be is god giving a picture yes now you see abraham staring out at the star trying to count them every time he is looking his own body 
he is reminded of the impossibility that is that his body is talking to him but when he moves his focus and looks up to the picture that god has shown him looking giving him example and saying look at the star count if you can so shall be your seed be now what is abraham doing when he is walking out at the desert he looking at the stars when he is doing he is filling the eyes of his heart with the promise of god praise the lord when he is walking in the daytime he is looking at the sand reminding himself of the promise what is doing now he is meditating upon that word god had given to him see when god says you will become father of many nations he has no idea of that how it will happen it was difficult him to imagine that but look at god pulling him out of his door and he is saying look at the stars look at stand sand this how your seed is going to be countless that's what meditating is about that's how i need to meditate upon the word of god i must take the scripture and not to hurry to just think out of it no 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 the promise is given to us so that we become a partaker of divine nature and god's nature is not to operate in unbelief but god's nature is to trust god's nature is to love god's nature is to be sure jesus was sure of his father that's why he did what he what his father told him to do and he spoke what he heard from his father and he did all those things that he saw the father do so so when i receive a promise of god i must take time to imagine it to pictureize it to envision it what his promise is speaking to me and i must keep on doing it until it becomes a reality on the inside of me when that becomes reality on inside of me then i begin to know and understand lord your word has declared it i believe it and it's done i am convinced you know no bad news or nothing is going to hinder what i am standing on when we come to that level it has such as such a tremendous power now we are focusing on the promise of god that he has given to us we can put that faith in our life just as abraham put it to work in his life that is why i must just not read the word of god but i must meditate on it that word must become reality on inside of me which should uh, which should start speaking to me at every knock of fear coming to my mind and trying to shift me away from that promise every time the thoughts of fear is knocking in my mind the voice of god's word should come out to respond to that fear are you understanding praise the lord so that word which is the life has the power has the ability to bring a change and transformation in our physical situation praise the lord thank you jesus let's go to gospel of john chapter 15 verse 6 jesus is saying abide in me abide in my word the word says if anyone does not abide in me he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned praise the lord here jesus is saying if a man is not in me he is cast forth as a branch and is withered now all jesus is asking us to do abide in him he says when you abide in me you will bear much fruit the meaning of abide does not mean that i pay him a casual visit there is a difference there is a difference between abiding and there is difference between the word visit when when he is saying if a man he is saying if a man abide in me 
saying, I want you to make home in me. I want you to make me as a permanent address. That's what you are hiding place. That's where I want you to live. If you are living in me, you are abiding in me. You are protected from every attack of the enemy. You are protected from it. If the enemy fires at you, that fiery darts not been able to penetrate to you. And this is the only thing he is asking us to what? He is asking us abide in me. And one thing I am truly responsible is for my union with him, my commitment with him, my relationship with him. That's why I have to be committed. I have to be focused, remaining to dwell in him. That's why he tells that he dwells in the secret place in the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. All he is asking us to do is simple. He is saying, if you keep your union and fellowship with me intact, if you make that your number one focus, make your relationship with me as number one, everything is taken care of. But you know what we say, I am facing such big problems. My life has gone upside down. You don't know what I am going through. But God is asking us to do something. He is asking us to do something. He has also shown us the way to do it. And he's saying, and if in this moment, if you are just keep your focus on me, I don't want you to be anywhere distracted. Just keep focus in me. Keep abiding in my word. You watch and see how my protection will take over you. How my provision will come forth for you. But what is our response? We come under the pressure of those situations in our life, which is actually temporary. But we believe it is so permanent. Now, I don't even have the time to fellowship with the Lord. Why? Because this problem, this mountain that I am looking at is more real to me than my God. When we are facing mountains in our life, when we are going through troubled waters, when we are going through that storm, that the time you need to abide in him the most. You need to maintain your union with the Lord, especially when the storms is going through in your life. is actually coming to overtake you. That's when you need to abide in him. You might say it is not easy. Correct. Yes, it is not easy. I agree with that. It is not easy. It is not easy to do that. But praise God. God has given us his anointing. God has given us his word. He has given us the power. He has given us the authority. Now, whether that storm, sickness in your body or financial crisis or your family issues or whatever kind of tension, the temptation in that storm is for you to settle your attention and your mind on the problem. When you are going through that storm, what is the devil trying to do? The devil is only trying to get your attention on that storm. And he wants your attention to be settled on the problem because until and unless your attention gets settled down, that until and unless you are focusing on that, he has no power to hold or take grip over you. For him to be able to make that mountain bigger in your life, what is going to do? He is going to give you those thoughts. All he is going to do, those thoughts trying to get your attention. We must ask ourselves question. When I am going through the storms of life, when I am going to deep trouble waters in my life, where is my attention? Is on the storm? or is it on Jesus? But at that moment, we don't even to think about anything else other than the problems. And that's exactly why God brought Abraham out. Because God knows what struggle he's going to go through. And God knows the struggle we are also going through. And that's why he has given us his word. 
you know in those days god spoke to abraham it was not even in writing correct for us he has given us to writing so that we i can take the that word stick it before my eyes keep imagining it just like he taught abraham to look at the stars and imagine how he taught abraham to look at the grains of sand and imagine and get his focus back even god his even god has changed his name also because see the devil's plan is to keep our focus on the storm that the reason that's the reason he has sent the storm in the first place please listen and understand that is the devil's strategy that's what the devil has the plan and the reason we are going through this mountain we are going through the storm is because the devil wants to distract you and me from the fellowship want to have with the lord why is pressing on so much of care upon you and me why is giving you so many thoughts bringing your attention on your problem over and over again please understand it is because he wants your attention away from your relationship with god over to the problems over to the thoughts he is bombarding your mind with don't fall into that devil's trap and that exactly what god was teaching abraham that that's exactly jesus is saying you abide in me you abide in me you know when i used to so much of struggle to really have believed the word because i am so much focused on my problem and i always pray to the lord lord when will i come out of the problem i used to think maybe i am not confessing the scripture much i need to confess the scripture more so i would go on confessing 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 whenever getting time if only 15 minutes time i go and confess in scripture because i don't want to waste my time no matter how much i am confessing i am confessing but still i can see the problem now instead of the scripture leading me to rest in the promise of god now the enemy is using that deception he is telling me that you are confessing the word of god but nothing is happening but what but but what is god's intention god is saying you take my word and believe in it you rest upon it and you consider it done believe it and you will see it why people are struggling to believe god's word but god is saying you don't have to struggle to believe my word god is saying you just take my word meditate upon it imagine it think upon it speak it leave it as you continue to do it you come to a point we will reach a point where in now doubting become difficult now and believing will come easy it will become a part of lifestyle how now because when you are taking that word meditating upon it you are imagining it you are speaking it now what are you doing you are allowing that word to stamping in your heart you are getting your mind washed you are getting your mind soaked with that word that's that any moment you find a thought arising in your mind which is not according to god's word now immediately your tongue will start speaking what you have deposited in your heart that's the word that's how i take every thought into captivity and bring into obey in christ jesus so are we supposed to keep up thought on the lord and that requires training and as we consciously do it over and over again now faith which is deposited in that word we are meditating that spirit of faith will start beginning to begins to flow into you and that faith will actually push out every form of unbelief every form of strife every form of wrong understanding and will now set you free amen and now truth will not only set you free but help you to walk in continuous victory victory over what victory over that very mountain victory over that very storm which is the 
enemy is sending away to distract you and me praise the lord thank you jesus isn't it very beautiful when we read scripture and god did not leave him just like that he showed him you know there is an absolutely amazing promise god is telling when we are meditating on that promise you imagining it you are actually seeing unseen and that's what god wants you to keep your focus on not on the thing but on the thing which are unseen what i am seeing right now is temporary the financial crisis that i am seeing is temporary momentary the sickness that you might be seeing in your body the symptoms that you are seeing in your body please understand that is temporary momentary you might be look at your loved ones and telling this this person will never change please understand we need to look at unseen not what you are seeing right now i have to make a decision to settle my attention on the word not on the lies because whatever i pay attention to will eventually begin my life you want to pay attention on god's words mercy god's mercy will be start bigger and bigger you will start experiencing his mercy in such an amazing way which you never seen before in 2020 when we started our small restaurant cloud kitchen operating from our home just a take away restaurant we have tie up with zomato only that time and that time sister viana helped me a lot she gave gave the teaching her teaching on vision told me to listen and you make a vision and she also sent me the audio she spoke in that vision according to habakuk uh, habakuk 2 23 and told me to write it down the vision about our fried chicken restaurant and make a drawing and paste it your uh, your kitchen bedroom whenever and whenever you pass that poster look at that poster visualize uh, visualize that poster imagine it and leave it that moment so i told my son to make a drawing because he is a architect and he is draws well and he made a colorful poster of our restaurant and that uh, uh, showing the restaurant and customers in front of our house standing in queues in front of our house and they are waiting in queues and also the zomato delivery boy sitting in bikes waiting in queues hmm? so as the sister told me i did exactly same i took the print out of that poster stick into walls of my kitchen my bedroom my my prayer room my drawing room uh, so whenever i and my wife see that poster we both started to imagine that for our restaurant and also i started to confess what was in that poster daily i look i took it i it took almost 6 to 7 months suddenly last year's lockdown in may 2021 uh, when everything is uh, everything was closed it is not only our restaurant from home is operating one fine day we started to receive uh, food orders from zomato and it is like a, and it was not stopping uh, we are receiving order back after after order after order order after order and we are uh, receiving order after order from zomato and it was not stopping and in front of our house there was a queue of zomato delivery boys waiting in queues and it was amazing experience on that day from evening 5 pm to 8:30 pm because up to 8 pm 8 pm the zomato was operating in lockdown and the order in that way we received never received in our restaurant not only that day but the whole month of may and mid june we received abundant food orders because the word which i confess it meditating it visualize it it come to pass now praise the lord and that first day i called sister vienna and i gave my testimony on that night every time a thought would come i staining my mind and i staining my heart with the word of faith i am doing it consciously if any person in my family comes and unbelief or any thoughts arise in my mind now i have my tongue ready to fire please listen we have been trained to back answer yes see how quickly we back answer if somebody does anything if somebody does wrong to us my tongue is so quick to back answer isn't it right 
if anybody comes against me will i leave that person i will show the person who i am when i when it when it comes to devil attacking my mind why is that i keep my mouth shut and i don't open my mouth and back answer to the back answer to the devil with the word of god when we open our mouth and we back answer the devil with that word he will gets paralyzed he get arrested so does we have to do this consciously yes if i don't do it consciously i will not be able to recall i will not be able to deposit you know the word of god say that the word has the power to stain the word of god has the power to wash my old thinking renew my mind build such a concrete strong hold god's word in my mind any time any attacks i am ready to, uh, i am ready to back answer him say you are a liar when words became reality in your heart and you became convinced and you say lord you have said it it has done and i am settled with it when we meditate upon the word to that level that word became reality in your in you praise the lord now that word has the power to alter that word has the power to change your life and the moment i began to understand how i meditate upon the word after that i didn't have any struggle to believe in god's word 1 peter 5 7 says cast your care jesus he cares for you now everything a thought comes and every time a thought comes contradicting to god's word i open my mouth and say lord i cast my care upon you because you cares for me i am not go- i am not going to carry the care of this problem praise the lord thank you jesus hallelujah thank you jesus teaching us this powerful truth thank you jesus you teach joshua how to meditate your word you teach abraham how to meditate upon your word when they meditate your promise they saw the miracles signs and wonders in their life thank you lord in the same way by the power of the holy spirit you teach us how to meditate upon your promise so that we also experience success and prosperity in our life thank you jesus praise you jesus hallelujah jesus praise the lord brothers and sisters Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother Lawrence. Thank you, brother Lawrence. Thank you. Thank you, brother Lawrence. Thank you. Thank you, brother Lawrence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you